So I've been using GitHub Copilot and ChatGTP for different programming tasks for the last 30 days. And as somebody that has seven years of software engineer experience, I want to share my feedback, tips, and tricks. So if you're an engineer or just curious about the state of AI coming from a real person that's not trying to sell you some pipe dream, here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. I hope you find this helpful. Now the internet is flooded with ChatGTP videos, so I'm just gonna spend two minutes and give you my honest perspective on it. So spoiler alert, it's not gonna replace engineers, at least as it is today. Now you may have seen videos of people creating whole websites with uh, ChatGTP, and it's very impressive what it's able to do. But a lot of those programming examples, people create basically a navigation bar with a few text components. Now it may be helpful for people that don't know how to code or junior engineers, but if you need a basic website, just use no-code solutions like Shopify or Squarespace. You don't need a chat GTP or engineer for that. Now, as someone with several years of experience, the problems I get stuck with are a lot more nuanced. So I still find myself going to Stack Overflow or GitHub and typically look at answers within the last year, which doesn't work with chat GTP at the moment because it's programmed to look at data up until December, 2021. Now they'll probably change it. Maybe we'll use ChatGPT instead of Google to search for answers, but it doesn't currently improve my workflow and currently it won't replace me as it is. Now on to GitHub Copilot, a tool I actually use. To be honest, I was a bit skeptical at first, but when I heard that Andre Karpathy, the OG who helped lead the team behind Tesla AI, once I heard that he uses Copilot, I decided to try it. Now it's free for the first 30 days and then it's $10 a month. It integrates with the two most popular IDEs, which is VS Code and JetBrains. Now the examples I will go over are in TypeScript, but it also supports Java, Python, Ruby, Go, and other languages. All right, so two things that GitHub Copilot is amazing at. One is just figuring out broad patterns that I've just seen from decades of code. So the most simple example I'll just give you one is, let's say we want to do months, right? So it already can assume that we want to do an array of months. And here, let's say I do January, but I want to do the full month, right? And it already can infer that, um, you know, the other 11 months, which, uh, you know, I think this is pretty cool. But um, let's say a more complicated example, a slightly more complicated example would be, let's say cons check, um, check days in a um, month. And as you can see already, it is already auto-completing this for me and it basically completed this um, dysfunction for me. And I just tab over every time and it completes that. And let's just double check it. So console log. And as you can see here, it is already inferring the solution for me. So let's, let's do March of 2023. 23, that should be 31. 31. So we're just going to cont we're just going to run this file and 31. So as you, as you can see here, it is already saving me time. Now these are broad patterns. Now I'm going to show you a few more hotkeys and then, um, so let's do, let's say I want to do, uh, check, uh, days between two dates. Now you see it's already auto completing for me again, which is amazing. So we're going to tab over. And then I want to show you uh, a few other options. So let's say I didn't like this suggestion. What I could do is I could uh, do option and then right bracket. And as you can see here, it's providing me different options. So right bracket is going forward, left bracket is going backward. And I believe if I do command and enter, let's try that, command and enter, it will provide all 10 solutions on the right side, uh, which is really cool. Now. Uh, I, I use this occasionally. Usually it suggests uh, the first example and uh, that's good enough for me, but it's nice to see that it's that it does that. Now these are kind of broad patterns and you could just imagine that I could like basically Google this and uh, maybe I'll find like a Stack Overflow response that will uh, give me an answer for this. Now the more interesting solution is when it uses patterns within your code to figure out uh, basically what kind of the next answer should be. So let's um, go a little further down. And so here basically I have a code from like a year ago where I was testing some stuff in TypeScript and Solidity, uh, which you don't need to know the details of it, but you'll see that it is inferring interesting patterns. So yeah, I have a thousand uh, basically a thousand lines of test code here. So I want, let's say I want to write another test. So I have already, it 
is it is assuming what I'm gonna write. So the previous test was creator cannot withdraw if project was canceled. So the, the next test could be creator cannot withdraw if project was not successful. That would make sense. And let's see what it suggests. So basically it, it checks if the project was not successful, I should not be able to withdraw. It already wrote this for me, which is amazing. Now, um, I think I forgot um, maybe a parenthesis here, but that's a quick fix. And let's just double check if this test works. So I'm just gonna use NPX uh, hard hat test. And voila, it works. It's like dark magic. It is quite amazing. So to summarize, ChatGTP is a novel tool that wears off for programming tasks. It's not super useful. Now, I don't want to undermine the stuff that it's doing, specifically in writing and creative work. It's amazing. Having said that, I don't know any experienced engineers to use it at all for programming. I'm sure it will improve over the coming months and years, so I'll keep checking back on it. On the other hand, if you're an everyday coder, GitHub Copilot is a great addition to speed up your coding because it suggests code and tries to predict what you type as you're typing it, and there's no context switching. Now, both of these tools are far from deploying production level apps by themselves. Now, there are lots of no-code solutions like Squarespace or Shopify that made simple websites coding obsolete, yet there's still demand for lots of engineers. So we will see what happens. Now, if you played around with these or other AI tools, I'm curious what you think. Leave a comment. Thank you for watching and have a good day. See ya.